Hello, I'm Elizabeth Warburton and welcome to Season 3 of Property Elevator. In Season 2, we saw many property professionals face the angels to try and secure that all-important funding for their property projects. And this year, we're back for more. Now, we've seen over the last year just how important it is to have your money working for you. With inflation rising and bank interest levels at their lowest in years, it's never been more important to put your money to good use. This is why so many people turn to property investing. It's not easy though, you often need both the finance and the knowledge to take that deal over the line. And that's where our angels fly down to help you. In this show, we give property professionals the chance to pitch their deals to our five seasoned property investors. Helen Chorley, John Howard, Paul Mahoney, Ranjan Bhattacharya, and Nicholas Woolwork, or who we call our property investment angels. These developers have the chance to walk away with the backing of someone who can bring both the finance and experience to their deal. You're watching Property Elevator. Hi, I'm John Howard. I've been a property developer and investor for 40 years and during that time I've bought and sold in the region of 4,000 properties. My name is Paul Mahoney. I'm a property investor. I also founded Nova Financial Group, which is a property investment advisory company. My name's Helen Chorley. I'm a professional property investor. I'm also a co-founder of the Property Sisters UK community, supporting women and SME developers in the industry. My name is Nicholas Woolwork. I'm an investor, developer and owner of PropertyForum.com and the development brand Redbrick. My name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I'm a property entrepreneur, an investor and developer for the last 30 years. Firstly, you know, without being a school teacher, you've made an error in your numbers on the pack. The rest can do what they want. I don't really care. If it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it is a duck. Why would you go for the extension if, you, if there's not much to be gained on the number side of things? You, there needs to be a bit more meat on the bone and a bit less complications. If you came in and said it's 400,000, then we'd be talking. Welcome to episode four. Let's see who our first pitch of the day is. My name's Suk. Um, I'm a doctor as my day job. Okay. Uh, and recently just got into property. Uh, me and my brother sort of completed my deal about a few months ago. Congrats. So something very new to us, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you've been doing it together. Together, yeah, it's our first one. My dad's kind of had a few buy to lets in the past, so it's something we've always been around, but yeah. not taking the plunge. So tell us about the deal that you've brought today then for the Angels. So today the deal that I'm bringing is a sort of mixed use uh, commercial and residential property. Mm -hmm looking to take advantage of the new permitted development rights coming in sort of from August to see whether there's an angle of converting it to residential to add some value. Okay, and how much are you looking for for back in today? Ideally it would be sort of the full amount, yep. so somewhere around 480, 485,000 yep. uh, with some renovation costs. Um, but, you know, we, we do have a small amount of money, but hopefully looking for the full amount. Yeah, and not only the full amount, but you'll also get the experience of, course, of, yeah. uh, of one of the angels too, fingers crossed. Definitely, yeah. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll be here as you leave and we'll have a chat on the way out. Brilliant, cheers. We've now got Suka coming in. It looks to me like it's a freehold shop. I think he wants to develop the basement. I think upstairs is uh, been sold on, on long leases, but they are relatively short long leases, if you get my meaning. Um, in Greenwich, shall we get them in? Hi, Suka. Thanks for coming in today. Lovely to meet you. And you as well. Uh, tricky times this year with COVID, but you're still doing deals. It's good to see. Just finished our first one a few months ago, so very new into it. So you've done a deal already. What was that? Can you tell me about that? That was, first? so we completed on that three months ago. That was a commercial property. Uh, my brother and I, we kind of uh, set up a company and purchased that. It was a vacant commercial property. Can you just tell me about the size and value of the last deal you did to give me an idea of your track record? Sure, yes. 415,000. And that was about just under 2,000 uh, square foot okay. property that we bought. Really helpful. Okay. And one final question before I let Helen dive into the numbers. Um, you said you're doing this with your brother. Are we 
essentially looking to invest in yourself and your brother's company um, or is it just yourself today? So that was kind of what we wanted. Um, again, I'd be be open uh, to see what you guys think, but that was... So you've ditched your brother come. already? Definitely not. So you've already been in the door <laughs> two minutes? Definitely not. <laughs> oh, I think just thicker than water, I thought. I th no, I think our, our family unit is very much sort of cohesive. Okay. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll join and separate at, at different paths, but we'll always help each other out. And what was your background before property? My day job is I'm a doctor. Right. Um, and this was kind of our first deal. So not sort of full time in, into property, just kind of starting out really. So Sook, uh, tell us a little bit more about what this deal is all about. This is a mixed use freehold uh, property, um, which has uh, a use class E retail shop on the ground floor. Um, I think the lady was an artist who owns it and she was selling her artwork from there. The basement uh, is a sort of one bedroom flat. So just to be specific, you say it's a one bedroom flat, but it's part of the shop. It's not, At, it doesn't yeah. have planning use as a one bedroom flat. Downstairs. I think the, the actual planning use is as a C3 uh, residential for the basement. Okay. In terms of the deal, so um, what we would be looking to do in order to add value would be uh, making use of the sort of forthcoming permitted development prior approval in August uh, using class MA to convert the um, ground floor shop into a residential studio. So, um, we're, you know, given the space constraints, I think that the ground floor is 38 square metres, which I think would be just enough for a studio. What is the score with the, uh, the freehold and the the lease is upstairs. The uh, property has four floors. So the yep. two two floors on top is a single flat. Right. It's quite a large flat. I think it's around about a thousand square foot nice or just flat. over. And that actually has a short lease on it. So it's got- How long has the lease got to go back? So it's 67 years left. Okay, so that's good news. So, so yeah. obviously you can, um, it's likely that you could either buy that flat back in again when when they decide to sell because they can't sell to anyone else unless of course they apply to, to have an ex lease extension going forward the government are going to bring the new rules out not out yet but they're going to bring new rules out 99 99 999 year lease at zero grand rent so you've got to bear that in mind and also you know on a on a, on a property like that with 67 years to go we probably you'd probably get 60 or 70 thousand potentially for, for, for a lease extension. But under the new rules, that's going to be reduced. We don't know what that's going to be. It's going to be a different calculation to the one that they make it out for now. So just be careful on that. But there's certainly some value uh, on the upper floors in, in terms of a lease extension for you. So that's good. That wasn't and something I've and added have, in. And so have you calculated that into your figures or not? I haven't. No, um, I, didn't, I didn't see it. I no, don't, I, it. Helen would have said if you had, probably. <laughs> I did kind of make a note of it, but yeah. I didn't add it in. No, um, okay. No one wants you to overinflate anything, but we do need to know the full facts. Sure. So that we can then ascertain, you know, whether to invest of or course. not. I kind of agree that potentially the 30 grand is a little bit light with the, with the renovation, depending on what needs to be done to the property, especially given there's a change of use there might be some extra things that need to be done there to to bring it to standard. Um, the fact your brother's involved concerns me a little bit because it means that if I was to invest, there's three parties involved in the deal yeah. and the, the margins aren't huge already. Um, so, you know, that that's just one one note. But Paul, that depends on what what you know. What of course, it depends offer on you're going to make per, per, for them to share the it deal. Depends with, on the split. I suppose that's that's yeah. not all we've heard. We haven't heard yeah. that yet, have we? You know, I I conservatively added another thirty grand of total costs, which brings that down to eighteen percent. Which again, you're getting a bit slim. It is, there. but but to be fair to Sucker, he's got nothing in for the for the freehold revision upstairs. That's true, but that may not happen. The thing with that freehold revision is we don't know when, it's like popcorn, it's, you don't know yeah. when it's gonna pop. Yeah. It may pop in the first three months, it may not pop for another five, 10 years, because you can't force the issue. No, well, you they can't. the rules and, and the, the, you know, the, the, the cost that- Well, I, I per, the good news nothing. for you is exactly. I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna put some of that in my calculations for you. <laughs> I'm right? glad. Like, the rest <laughs> can do what they want. <laughs> I don't really care, because the only person, you know, is gonna be doing the deal, if we do it, is you and me, not Brilliant. these lots, by the sound of things. So we'll <laughs> see what happens. Well, we haven't finished yet. So well, yeah. <laughs> Just putting my foot forward. I am fascinated by the proposal um, in terms of what you're planning to do. It looks to me that the shop and the basement are connected. 
So in terms of what it is, it's basically one planning unit. All of the other properties have is the whole of the basement is a C3 defined uh, you know, residential dwelling. And you know that because? Because the, uh, the estate agent actually showed me the lease, pl uh, the lease plan for the sh property. I think it was two doors down or, or next door. What I'd be looking for is you know, evidence from, say, the valuations office website. Is there separate council there tax? What's on the planning records for that particular property? This is very, very important because the it's the layout, the floor plans that you've shown, shows the basement is connected to the shop. So that means it, it, it looks... If it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it is a duck. So it's basically one planning unit. Valuation office I yeah, did have a look at, and that is they're only paying rates on, I think it was 24 square metres. That's still not the issue, because remember, the basement may be non-rateable. There are many areas of commercial buildings which are just non-rateable because they don't have a commercial use. So that could be just delisted for, that's not proof of what you're saying. The reason this is important is because under permitted development, which you want to go for, if you want to get a flat in the basement, you cannot assume that there's a flat already there unless there's something that definitely says it's there. There was one other slight giveaway possibly was that there's actually two separate utilities meters as well. So Good. one for the basement, Good. one for the upstairs. So that was another giveaway. I did actually email the agent two days ago to ask if there was any kind of proof or, you know, if there was a planning application or anything. Someone will swear an affidavit to say that the basement's been used as a flat independently for more than 12 years. It's got a certificate of lawful use you can get from the council. And if you've got someone like the present, the present owner or one before that, who was happy to swear an affidavit saying, uh, because it's true, of course, it has to be true, that it has been used for independent flat for more than 12 years, you will potentially get planning for that. You will have as good as planning. You can get a mortgage on it and everything else on that basis, so oh, you can sell it off on that basis. Is it 10 years? Well, it's not, no, no it's, it's not. No, it's four if it's resi it's to four, resi, yeah, it's commercial not, it's, to it's, resi it's, is 10. It's, it's technically 10, but I like 12 because that way there's no argument about it. Yeah, if it's enough. just 10, then so, well, are you sure it's not 9? If you say 12 and you get the sworn affidavit on 12, then everyone, then everyone knows what they're doing. No so argument, that, So yeah. that's one angle that, that um, I think you might have on the basement because otherwise, you know, you have to go for the full planning application um, and it will it will create, you know, more costs for you. And and obviously, also, there is a, a chance you won't get it. You, you probably will get it. But what do you think on that? Well, first of all, you're right on the 10 years. Because, Thank you. Because it Nicholas. is connected. It's change of use. Yeah. Um, if it was separately split, then it would be four years, which it's not. So John's right on that one. Ah. The, the, other, the other thing is getting 10 years is going to be quite hard because you have to demonstrate continuous usage. Yeah. Um, and you may need more than just the affidavit, but that's a planning consultant that you need to get. The problem is that if you cannot demonstrate that 10 years use as a basement flat, looking at the floor plan, it's unlikely that it would meet the natural light requirements to get it under permitted development looking at the where yeah, the windows are. Yeah, I mean, are. there's a, a light well um, that does give quite a lot of natural light. Uh, you know, looking at the floor plan, I'm not sure if you can see, there's a uh, sort of quite a large window and there is a door that's not on that floor plan as well, okay. which is giving quite a lot of natural light. Then there's a sort of conservatory on the back mm. as well, which is giving. Yeah. What's your return on cost or return on GDV with, for this? depending on whether an extension is done or not. So 700 or 706 or 760,000. And in terms of the cost, that would be 540 or 570,000. And your return on cost and return on GDV? Again, I would have to look that up. I think I may have put it in my pack, but I don't have the number. On it's it. definitely not in your pack. Is it not? So it's 23% return on GDV, 29% return on cost, and it's about the same for either option, as far as I can see, which then begs the question for me, why would you go for the extension if, you, if there's not much to be gained on the number side of things? Being sort of slightly inexperienced and being my first property, I wanted to come, you know, I didn't want to give you numbers that you will totally find sort of unreasonable. Yeah, no, con yeah, conservative, conservative is always good. And have you got any contingency in there? Like the renovation looks 
quite light to me, if I'm honest, for 30k for, for option one. That's not something that I've put in there. The reason the um, renovation was quite low, and I was going to put put it higher actually, um, was because when my when I went into the property, the property was actually in very good condition. Okay. Um, it's you know it's been plastered recently. The windows have been done. Right. Um, you know everything seems to be in order. Um, and also, again, I don't know whether this will be of any interest, but uh, my dad does a lot of building work himself. Okay. So he, you know, it's can... It's very relevant. Yeah, all right. Mm, yeah. So he could definitely help with, with, with things like that as well. I'm interested, how do you actually get to the basement? If you're splitting this practically, where are you going to put the entrance? There's a sort of a common shared um, access to the rear of, I think there's three or four Fr from the front From the street or from the back? Not from this main street where the, where the front from is. From an alleyway and then in. Yeah, so all of the properties access their basement through. Yeah. Not so attractive, is it? Is the postman going to like that? Going down a dodgy I'm not worried alley. about the postman. <laughs> no one gets anything delivered anymore anymore, Nicholas. You should know no, that. You're sorry, much younger than me. Um, emails, isn't it now, John? Emails no, now, yeah, apparently, yeah. so I'm no, told. I mean, it, it's not ideal, but it does um, sort of create, uh, I think, because of the other three flats on that sort of, uh, sort of, parade they all are also using thing. it yeah. um it's not as sort of dark and dingy no. as i thought it would be okay firstly you know without being a school teacher you've made an error in your numbers on the pack right um, you put the the remortgage value of the don't worry you can save lives he can't no. yeah so don't worry about <laughs> it's that true, it's true but it's so pertinent you're kind of to the exit exactly. the exit plan sure. leaves nothing in rather than the 14k out that you suggested so i think you know based on that kind of number that, that rules out the two bed option which is what you were basing that on. I thought that it, you could only get a studio if it was 38 square metres and you couldn't have a one bed. No, it's, it's the minimum size is 37. It can be a studio or a one bed. Oh, right. OK. So well, then, um, you know, definitely know who, good, yeah, would go for a one bed there. And a one bed's going to be, I know it's the square, same square footage, Suka, but it will be worth more money. Mm. So I don't think you've done yourself, to be fair, um, you've done, you haven't done yourself the, the, the best in coming in without the... The, of course. The, the best figures without yeah. being over. If the exit is a remortgage, that the rents won't suffice for a standard buy to let mortgage, you'll probably be forced to go for a, at the very least a five year fixed product where the lender will lend to you at the pay rate rather than the, the benchmark of five and a half percent. The other potential issue is if you do go with the studio or even a one bed at 38 square metres and the rents are at that level, you're really reducing your pool of lenders because it's a small unit with the, with the rent that doesn't quite stack up. So that's, you know, if, if you're selling, that's not so much a problem so far. Well, it's, it's the buyer's problem. I didn't quite understand what you meant to start with on Sorry. that. So it's a bit complicated for me. All right, so there were some changes, some changes with regards to mortgages a few right. years ago where, where most buy-to-let mortgages, you now need to meet a, a minimum benchmark rate of 5.5%. Okay, Even if you're borrowing it. at two yeah. or three, you need rent that will meet a certain yes. benchmark. Stress, Stress testing. testing. Exactly. Okay, sorry, I understand. Now, there's more flexibility on five-year products than there right. are on others. Gotcha. Because some five-year products, they will stress test at the rate they're actually lending to you at. So that's my point, is the, the pool of lenders or, or products, more specifically, for these types of properties, it will be much smaller than your standard buy to let. Okay. What is your preferred exit? Because you've got the refinance and then you've got the sale, but on both of the refinance, there's money left in the deal. I would prefer sale, um, but um, I think I've come here today to try and get as much experience oh. and knowledge from you guys. And, uh, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll definitely take on board what, what you would think would be the best. Well, I think the two beds out because the rent's only, you know, 900 quid more a year. Yeah. If that's correct, I mean, I don't see how that can be right. By the way, how the, have you calculated the so those figures? figures were again, like I said, were off a website which uses kind of um, uh, average rental data. One thing to take away is learn to be practical, look at numbers and sense check them yourself. Because for a yearly rent between a, a studio or a one bed yeah. and a two bed is going to be more than nine hundred quid a year. Yeah. Sense checking that. So the data is not always right. It can be a good indicator. But get on the ground, speak to five local agents, get them out to see the property, say, I'm looking to buy this, what do you think they'll rent for? Get real opinions behind you, and that'll help form your own opinion, because data can be quite misleading sometimes, sometimes for the better. It, you're talking about extending the ground floor, isn't it? No, it's the basement floor. So the basement, it, it, so you, is that involving a dig? 
No, no. So the um, how can I explain? Does this? it slope away at the back? It, it slopes it away. Slopes so away. So away. The basement so is the, the ground floor at the back. Yes, yes that's so right. The basement okay. at the ground floor. So the basement at the back is ground floor. That's right. I like that. Yeah, that's good. And the I think in the pack as well the next door property have I see just, what they've done. just yeah. built the the extension okay. there there was actually which was a shame there was planning permission for a double story extension on the basement and ground level over both units mm -hmm. over, yeah over, so it was a combined application yeah. with next, next door, door yeah. so to do sort of a double yeah. story that elapsed and they didn't and then next door have just put in permission and, and built their sort of just their bit basement okay bit. while this lot are still thinking about it what pri what price are you paying for it? Remind me. I've been told by the agent 485 uh, with a subject to planning uh, sort of app, uh, offer would, would... Okay. Unfortunately, I don't see this as a deal for me. If you came in and said it's 400,000, then we'd be talking, seriously talking. Um, however, um, I think... Um, as a joint venture partner, you'd be a great joint venture partner. You're intelligent. You you know you you you've got it all going on for you. Unfortunately, today this one isn't for me. But um, I wouldn't be dissuaded if you come back um, on another show with a little bit more knowledge. Of course, yeah. Uh, and giving it giving the 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 property the best chance you have of getting funded. Um, and I don't think you've done that today. I think where I am is there's a bit too much ambiguity in the numbers and, you know, especially in terms of kind of how much room there is in the deal. Um, also, I'm probably not the best to handhold you through something like this. So not for me today, but thank you for coming. Thanks. I think the problem with this particular deal is uh, it's, it, it falls down to the basics. I think you're overpaying for it. And I also think you have um, underestimated the refurb costs. I know you've got family in the trade and all of that, but it's actually the material costs of doing the soundproofing and the fireproofing and making separate dwelling units. Um, that all um, uh, is stuff that you have to buy rather than get a relative to provide as labour, if you see what I mean. I think you've underestimated that. And for that reason, I think, I mean, this type of deal, you can, you can do these in the same area with better margins. I think this is a fish you want to toss back in the sea, uh, cast your rod again, get another one, and then come back to me. <laughs> Sounds good. Material prices are going through the roof at the moment. Oh, yeah. So this is on a, on a deal that's deal that's marginal. You know, you're going to be really pushed. Um, but it's all about it's all about the price, isn't it? I mean, if if, if you know, hmm. if you came here with a price of four hundred thousand, we'd all be running around. Sure. You know, um, wanting to do the deal, and and it's all about the, the selling is in the buying. It's all about buying at the right price and you've got to be tough and as a doctor you're a very caring kind <laughs> decent caring person unlike the five of us here and you just need to toughen up a little bit yeah. on that because you know it is a different business it's a business and yeah. you're not in a business i understand that you're caring for it and it's a wonderful wonderful thing to do but this is a business and you just got to probably be a little bit tough and a little bit harder um, when you look into negotiation. Yeah, uh, look, I think, I, think, I think it's unfortunate. I like the area. I've lived in this area for five or six years. I think your train of thought is right. You know, the, all the things you've been saying are right. And I think it's even a deal you could potentially make work yourself. I, I don't think it's really a deal you want to be bringing one of us into because I look at it and think, well, for, for that to work for me, I'd need to be doing the whole thing. You know, I think that's my feedback on sort of presenting to a panel like us is, there needs to be a bit more meat on the bone and a bit less complications, but it doesn't mean you can't make that work yourself. I agree with the guys that you know you seem to be kind of. It's not the purchase isn't a deal. You're paying retail for this property, um, and, and you, you need you need to have a bit of an edge, a bit more of an edge to make this attract a bit more attractive. I have to disagree with Paul there. I don't think you should do this deal at the current purchase price at all. Quite no. frankly, I would I agree. Um, go back. Okay. See if it comes back to you. Suka, thank you very much thank for coming today for, and, and we very much appreciate it. And I don't think you're too far off. You just need to tighten the yeah, figures yeah. up, as Helen says, tighten the price up and you've got yourself a deal. Fingers crossed. All right. Thank yeah, you very much for coming for today. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. So how did you get on? 
Didn't exactly go as planned, didn't manage to get an investment, but it was a good learning experience. And okay, that's a shame. Tell us a little bit of the feedback then that you got. So it was mainly around, I think, the purchase price. So I think okay. I was too high. too high and uh, potentially not uh, showing all the avenues where you can add value. So I've learned quite a lot from that and you never know that if this deal's not one, there might be another one there. Well, best of luck. Brilliant, thanks a lot. Thank you. Nice guy, lovely guy. Uh, I love this type of deal. I just didn't think there's enough money in it. No, no. It was a four hundred thousand pounds. We'd all be, I said, four hundred grand. We'd all be interested, wouldn't we? If you knew his return on cost and return on GDV, it would have been a better start. He clearly for me. doesn't run the surgery. He's doesn't, a, doesn't he's, do the bookkeeping. Doesn't do the bookkeeping bit, but but he's obviously very decent, and and, and he's just got to sharpen up and be a bit and he a will. bit tougher. He'll and he will get that do. with he more experience. Do. It's only yeah. his second deal, so exactly. he will. Giuseppe, welcome to Property Elevator. My pleasure. It's lovely having you with us. Where have you come from today? Uh, from London. So tell us about that project then. This project is in Derby. Derby. We already got two properties over there. Mm -hmm. This will be the third one. Okay, so you know the area quite well. Yes, we are very familiar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, brilliant. And what are you after? Um, what investment? How much? We are looking for two hundred eighty thousand pounds. Sure. For uh, the whole project, the purchase and the, the refurbishment. Nice. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thank you I'll have much. a chat to you when you come out. Thank you very much. See you in a bit. Giuseppe, thank you very much for coming to see us today. Pleasure. Would you like to just tell us a bit about yourself and then a bit about the deal, please? Yeah. So my name is Giuseppe. I'm from Italy. I moved to London four years ago. And uh, after I work in the hospitality industry, I was able to build relations with people. So I realized I, I can use this relation for myself. One year and a half ago, I started my journey in the property industry and uh, I built a team because the, the goal is big. So I needed a team to, to go in this journey. Yep. So I'm here today and my team is working on the, the deal and the project and the next deal. So this Excellent. is why. And the deal is in Derby. The project is uh, seven double and suites with the open kitchen space and there already is a bathroom existing next to the kitchen. So it will be seven double and suites with the one guest, uh, one uh, bathroom guest. So we could add value on this one and then we decide to go with this deal. What, why do you need a, sorry, do you mind if I jump no, straight in there on the, on, the, on the shared bathroom? Why do you need a shared bathroom when you've got seven en suites? Because it's already existing. If we can break the, the if we break the bathroom, maybe we're gonna spend a lot of money, and we decided maybe with this bathroom, bathroom we can achieve more GDV in the end. I doubt you would. I mean, the GDV is gonna be really driven by the investment valuation on the income. Yeah. I don't think the bathroom's gonna add any extra income. No, but this is why it was the big deal. Maybe okay, we can leave it. We can use it as a utility room as well. Maybe we can okay. put the washing yeah. machine I mean, inside. There's a use for it, exactly. Yeah, and this is what's the plan, like yeah. get bathroom gas and then okay. the washing machine and we can use Much it for idea, this yeah. reason. What are you looking for from us today? I'm here today, obviously for the money for the deal, but not is the priority. For me, it's important even your expertise for uh, the next project we want to do. This deal uh, at the beginning uh, was different, but obviously, <laughs> I received the call and I say, okay, I need to pitch this deal anyway. Yep. No, Maybe okay. it's not appealing for you, but I say, okay, I will pitch it anyway. No, well, we're very glad you're here. So very glad you're here. So, but you're saying um, you can fund it yourself if you, without us anyway. You just want the experience. Um, I want to be honest with you. I my solicitor is ready with the searches of the property. Yep. And uh, already opened the doors with other investors. Yep. And I'll tell you this one. As I said, relationship. For the other project, we're going to finish in uh, 10 days mm -hmm. in Derby. Is it two miles away? Mm -hmm. And uh, the same investor is invested in that property, is rolling the money for this property a bit as well. Bit greedy, aren't they? they aren't they? So it's so happy don't to have work deal, with so us. This deal's funded. We, don't, we can't offer on this deal today. I, I, the contract is not in place yet. This is why okay. I say, this, okay, so I'm going to pitch anyway. Yeah. This deal's available. If we yes. want to invest Great. in it, you're, yeah. Okay. And is what sort of investment there? do you need today? Uh, the investment is uh, 280,000 yep. pounds. And uh, the purchase price is a 198. And then uh, for the refurbishment is a 67,000 pounds with uh, the contingency already inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we are looking with the investors is, uh, as I said, the expertise as well, but even I put three options on the, on the last page of the, yep. the so presentation yep. about okay. how we can uh, pay the, uh, yep. the investment okay. back. 
What are those fees, those 12K fees? How uh, do they break down? I put it as a fee, the architect, the broker, oh, so 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 all of these yes, fees. Yes, yes. With, with the three options on the back, it seems that you're looking for a loan as opposed to a partner. Yeah, this is why I said I put as investment for because this presentation was already with the other people as well. Right. So this is why you can see the three options on the on the on so the last page if, if as angel, a loan. It looks a like a loan. So if an angel were to offer you the money, are you open to to sharing the profit? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's good. When was the you, you've got a current HMO license what a 5 year new, yeah. new one? Was there one an HMO license previous to that? He, this was already a uh, license since 2001, yeah. and right. every five yeah, okay. years, obviously, they Fine. update. And uh, this one is uh, uh, from the December 2017, and it will expire the next year in December 2022. Okay, and it's licensed for seven people? Seven people. And the last five-year period was seven people? Yes, correct. Okay. But uh, it's in poor condition, as you can see from the, sure. from the video and the, the current uh, situation. And this is why it's uh, with seven bedroom and just two bathroom. Great. I mean, I'm asking because that seventh bedroom ordinarily would be a planning application. Yes, to get correct. This for is it, why so. it's already too generous and it's yeah, already perfect. with the license in place until okay. last next year. Do you have a lawful no, development no. certificate for it? It's just worth asking because it just kind of solidifies that planning yeah. position. Um, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. you've got plenty of evidence to argue it, it but it's always nice it's to already, uh, have It's already when the, the solicitor is working on that and even the architect is in, uh, in charge of doing this job, we don't uh, get any, any issue at all. And in terms of paying back an angel, uh, what's the plan for that? You'd refinance yes, correct. to repay the angel. And would that be on the bricks and mortar valuation or the commercial? The commercial. Uh, the commercial. Even the right. other okay. property we got, we, right. we got the, the commercial valuation. Right. And uh, I can tell you the numbers if you want for the yeah, other project please. as well. We, we love numbers here. I know, I know. You are, <laughs> you are the best on number. <laughs> <in analysis. laughs> a reputation precedes her. Yeah, yeah, but it's important. I, I done a research for each of you, so it's important. I like to, know. to think what he thinks of me. What did you find out? What did you find <laughs> out? I, I done it for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> so the other property, we gonna we are in the in the um, in the stage of refinancing. So we're gonna get the refinancing the in the end of the month, and uh, we bought the property uh, one three five. Uh, fee cost uh, was around ten thousand pounds, and the refurbishment was uh, one hundred one thousand pounds, and uh, we we spend in total the cost two hundred fifty thousand, and the new valuation will be we got the valuation in place four hundred k, and uh, is a two studio self contained. We done the loft conversion and extension, and the four double and suite, but high standard it means decoration all of this stuff. We we not looking about to buy cheap and then just a basic decoration. Uh, how, many, how many have you done before? Uh, we done, uh, uh, it's already working one project in Derby, yeah. and this one will be the second one, the, the third one, and uh, in, in, uh, the second one uh, is gonna finish in uh, 10 days, more or less. And do you have anything else aware? Uh, not yet, yeah. not yet. Okay. We're already looking at another place because at my team, I built a team with the four people, so everyone has the different role. Who are those four people? Tell us about the setup. Yes, I set up this company and you can see from the name is a go for it. This is the destiny of the story. We Love are the, uh, the background from Italy. I like that. But we are here from a long time. I moved four years ago. I'm the, the new one. But it's the guy. I, I know what I needed to, to achieve a big goal. And why did you pick Derby? So we say in London, the amount of money we yeah, need to too invest much. Yeah, is too much. Yep. How we can get the same return in other place, yep. but not up north like Newcastle or Sunderland. We decided to go in Midlands for uh, uh, even the, 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 the factory industry is, uh, are in Derby. T22, is that central? This property is a 14 minutes walk to the shopping center. It's a 15 minutes walk to the hospital. This is why we're looking for professional, maybe they, they work in the hospital. You mentioned at the back the needing the money for 12 months. Is, it, is there a reason for that? I uh, this wouldn't take very long. We, as we said, we, we're always looking for the worst case scenario. So we are looking to start the next month Middle of, July, middle of August, you're already architect in place, builder, they're already working on that. And it takes 12 weeks to complete everything. Obviously, you need to maybe add one month more just in case. So I think we can do even before, but just in case we say 12 months. I'm not a great fan of HMO. I know. However, um, you're very impressive. You've got your team together, you're organized. I love to hear all that. If it was a bigger a bigger deal, then I would be, although it is HMO, I would be interested if it was bigger. For me, it's a little bit small. However, if you get moving and do some bigger deals, 
um, more, more than one at once or something like that, so we can get our teeth into something, then I would, then I would be very interested in the future. And, and for me, you know, I'm very pleased you've come to see us today. Thank you very much. My end goal is, uh, is this one. Yeah, so it's going to be a long good. journey for me. No, no. Um, you're on the right lines, that's for sure. I'm in a kind of similar position. HMO isn't kind of really my thing, but you are doing something right if you've got an investor that's invested with you before and they've come back again and they're happy to roll. You're, you're doing something right. You're keeping them happy. You've obviously delivered on what you said you were going to deliver on, which is critical for investor relations. So I'm really delighted to hear that. You're very charming. You're very personable. It seems like you know what you're doing. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you go from strength to strength. Thank you very much. I think it's just um, not my bag anymore. I do a lot of HMOs. I haven't done one uh, in, in a few years now. We manage what we got. And it's the area as well. Do you want to come out of retirement? Do you know where Derby is, by the way? I know where Derby you is. Do. But I will say, um, you've picked a good area. That's one of the optimum areas for doing this sort is of it? stuff. That's interesting. Um, in terms of a balance yeah. between yield yeah. and a bit of yeah. capital appreciation, yeah. a lot of my students are doing this sort of thing in this sort of area. I thought you get that bit in balance. somewhere. Mm. What's that? Well, Student. I've got to say how I know, because I don't know it from yeah. personal experience, because I don't do that area. No. I do them you know, in, in areas which don't work anymore, but they work to maintain it. Anyway, for that reason, it's not for me, but I, th I think if you had something else, yeah. I'll give you my card later. We'll keep in touch. Thank you very much. You know, 12 months, it says here, you said 12 weeks. It's some, probably somewhere in between those two, to those two lengths of time. But what do you think is the reality? In 12 weeks time, six, 16 weeks time, we're finishing the project. And this is why we take a couple of months more because you never know with the refinancing. But we agree on that money and we pay back that money to the investor, which we pay monthly. A part, we're rolling a, a part monthly and a part in the end of the refinancing because obviously the investor need to, to see the commitment of, the, of paying because it's easy to say okay you give me my money I will pay you in the end and maybe I don't pay you back mm -hmm. so this is why it's important and the other thing we like to involve people not every single week but every month with uh, my investors because it's not I say it just pounds That's I clever. just send a message yeah. hey man look this is the project this is the update so it feels better so what, what interest are you paying them in October, we bought two property at the same time. And uh, as you know, in England, you have the law, which until the last day, the vendor can say, I don't want to sell anymore. So we agreed with this investor with uh, 150,000 pounds for two projects, which was the uh, half of uh, this project and half of the other one in Derby. Uh, we done all of the paperwork and the end, uh, uh, one week before the completion of uh, the exchange or the other property, the vendors say, no, I want to sell anymore. And we lost 10,000 pounds. And uh, when I say entrepreneur, you need to solve a problem. We say, OK, keep going. Because the rest of the refurbishment and uh, the purchase, we're done with the bridging. OK, because my networking, it wasn't big enough to fund another investors. But at one point, I say, I don't want to lose these two projects. So we say, move forward. And um, with these investors, we agree with the 2% per month. Wow. But you know why? We, we got a, a good chunk of money in this profit. I say, guys, we need to move anyway. We can't lose 10,000 pounds here. No wonder they want to roll over, though. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. It's a kind of bit of sharks. But I say, OK, move forward. That's no way. That's, that's, you guys. That's, that's no way to describe Ranjan. He's still in. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> I'm on. I want to be honest uh, with you guys. I know it was a bit like a sharks, but I say, guys, we need to because you know why. When you work for six months to found a good project to do it, and then at the end you found it, I say to the guys, okay, guys, uh, if we don't do these projects, it's gonna be very frustrating for us. So I say, maybe sacrifice ourselves now. I literally, with my full job uh, paying, I paid a bit of the interest because obviously you don't have amount of money in the, in the bank account. You, you don't want to be with sharks. That's a different show. You're here with angels. So <laughs> no, you're no, no. I know, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. But this is a part of our journey. At least that was quite a good one, man. Oh, thank actually. you. I do. If you crack enough jokes, one of them will be funny. <laughs> one, of, one of them will get aired if you're lucky. <laughs> it was frustrated even because it was during the lockdown and I couldn't meet no one. So send the wet signature. And then I send the paper, send by post, mm -hmm. and then no, I, I haven't received it. Send it again. Yeah. I Nightmare. say, guys, we need to move. But, but you've, demonstrated, you've demonstrated in what you've just said 
that you can deal with pressure, you can deal with a problem and you can analyse it and come out the other side. And that is very important to, to an investor, very, very important to an investor. So Ranjan, you're not in, no? No. Paul, how Something are we getting else, on? Yes. I just think it's a little bit tight. For, you know, if I was to just look at the numbers, 280 odd thousand, uh, 285, 280 is it? Um, you know, look, there's about 100 to 130 grand profit or thereabouts. Not bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if I split it with you, I'm only getting 50 on my 280. What? You know, in 12 months, which isn't, which isn't great. So we are very confident on seven bedroom double and suites, plus the open kitchen space and modernize and the high standard quality to achieve between 400 and 435. So if you're going to achieve, we see the best case scenario, 435, the 75% will be around 330,000 pounds, okay? So with that money, you can get a very good profit for you. But more than the profit, you have me. Very good. <laughs> That's normally the other way around, isn't it? What, what's yeah. the shareholding between the four, uh, four of you guys, all 25%? We, right now, the setup is at 33% three each, but we're going to reward in the end of the year when uh, maybe the property journey is going to be maybe a bit better to, to be four. That's very interesting. On that basis, I'm going to make you an offer and it's better than what you've asked for. Ooh. <laughs> so? <laughs> I'm going to offer you to mentor you weekly, but I want 20% of your business as your fourth partner. Okay, basically 80% is for us and 20% is for you. Correct. Okay, it's 20 And I hope you build your business. Maybe we can share the Amshar B development you do it. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll take you to my sites. I'll show you everything. I'll show you how to do the big stuff. I know I already talked with my team before. Yesterday we went to the stadium and uh, in, a, in a extra time I say, oh, really? tomorrow Excellent. I'm going to pitching the property elevator. So you need to be ready for yeah. every offer. Maybe we got in place. Confidence. That was already your best offer to be fair. Love that. But uh, I think anyone else? I think that's a really good offer. That's fabulous. That's a very general. I, I didn't say no. Yes, yeah. I just say no. Someone yeah, else of got course. the offer. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I, I don't. I can't beat that. I think you should go with that. So the only offer in place is yours. Well, you can turn me down. I, you can. You need to make the right decision for your business. I came here today just to. I know it was maybe the early stage because I know the the project you've done so far, or each of you. But maybe you started how I started now. Sure, we all did. We all did. We all did. And uh, yeah. I think if you want to grow the business, you need to. I don't say you need to leave chunk of money or chunk of the business, but you need to be realistic and say maybe you have more expertise. Mm. Maybe you can give me and it's worth more than 20% of my business. So, so you want to offer me more than 20% of your business? <laughs> no, you say 20%. <laughs> you say 20%. <laughs> oh, damn. Ward, Ward I went too, better I went to sign the contract, I went too low, right? didn't I? I went too Ward low. Ward is better to sign the There's contract. four of us. So I should have gone 25. Yeah, I was very generous. Really. Maybe we can do 15. Ah, oh. <laughs> uh, if you if you put twenty five, we can do fifteen. I'll, I'll be honest. I was going to offer twenty five to make it equal partners. Okay. Um, and I went to twenty, to be fair. So I kind of negotiated with myself before offering. So it's got I a conscience. I, I like the fact you you you've tried to counter, um, and I respect that. And I know that you're going to work hard for this business. I um, went through many difficult times, so this is for me. It's easy. I need it to be 20% And uh, for me, it's the pain into the gain, so it's, uh, it's not yeah. option or losing, it's winning, that's 100%. it. 100%. So I don't have any doubt. Okay. I'm, I'm buying it to you guys. Welcome on board. Yeah? Awesome. I need to Great. shake hands like this. Yeah. Yeah, Fantastic. Well Great done. decision. How did we get on? Uh, it went very, very well. Good. So that's a deal? Uh, better than a deal. Really? Okay. Better than a deal because How? I think that relationship is better than the deal itself. Interesting. So he, one of the angels uh, didn't invest in a, in, a, in a deal itself, but he invests in the business. Wow. So That's a first. We're going to have a mentoring here. and uh, I think for the next deal we're going to get a very good relationship to work with. Oh, well, congratulations. Really, really pleased for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was Thank my pleasure. You. Wow. What a nice guy. 
And you got yourself what a drive? business partner as got well a business, as, a, business business as a project. Partner. Fantastic. Wow. I think you've fantastic. done a fantastic job, and that's a great deal. Because it was the deal's too small on its own. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and that's but what, if they can knock two saying, or three of those out a year. Yeah. Oh, crikey! I mean, he, he will grow as quickly as you want him to. Yeah. And that's, with your that's experience it. and and, uh, and, and turbo charge him. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great, Exciting. it's a win-win, which Exciting. is how it should be. You know, we want people to leave this room having felt that they've won. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and that's that's important to us. Wow. What a day it's been. We've seen some outstanding deals come through and we have some very happy angels and investors. Not everyone got what they wanted, but hopefully everyone had a lot of fun and they've been left with some great feedback from our angels. I'm Elizabeth and you've been watching Property Elevator.